And Nicole asked me, she said, I have a seven month old who I've completely screwed up. Poor mama. We've all been there, right? We've all been at the point, probably many times, as moms where we think we've just screwed everything up. Nicole, I don't know you, but I'm pretty sure you haven't screwed it up. <laughs> but let's get your question answered. She says her seven month old gets rocked to sleep and she sleeps in her crib and wakes every hour until about 11 p.m. Oof. Then she wakes at two o'clock and four o'clock. At four o'clock she feeds her and she brings her into the bed. And please help because she's so, so desperate for sleep. Oh, Nicole, I totally feel you. I mean, you haven't screwed things up. This is a really, really common pattern that I hear from moms all the time. You know, when it comes to feeding your baby to sleep or rocking your baby to sleep, helping your baby fall asleep. When they're younger, it's not that big of a deal. And usually it's completely okay because it works and it really helps your baby sleep well until it doesn't help. Your baby is developing and her sleep patterns are changing and they're becoming more like an adult. And that's great, you want her to, to develop, but what you don't want is for your baby to be waking up all throughout the night because you're having to assist her. And often what happens is as they get older, it's really a sign that they need to learn how to fall asleep and stay asleep on their own. Often our babies give us the signs that we're looking for. They become more restless in the night. They have a harder time falling asleep and staying asleep. And typically that's the sign that your baby really needs to learn how to fall asleep on her own. The first thing that I want to say for, for any of you parents that are tuning in, um, a lot of us want to go ahead and tackle the night waking straight away because that's the thing that's the most painful and the most frustrating for us. But what we need to do, the way that I prefer to get babies to sleep well in a way that is gentler and it works um, more with their natural biological rhythms, is first you need to set a healthy sleep foundation. And then we can talk about you know, eliminating these extra night wakings. So I'll quickly go over um, the basics of setting up um, a healthy sleep foundation for your baby. And this is the basics of it. I've got much more detail in my programs, uh, in the Exhausted Mom Survival Kit, which I'll tell you about in just a little while, and also in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet, where we go in detail and I walk you, you know, step by step through it all. So without having the full picture, I'll just go over the sleep needs for your seven month old. Your seven month old, let's, the first thing that she needs in order to set her up to sleep well at night is she needs to have a biologically appropriate bedtime. Babies need to sleep often throughout the day and they need to have an earlier bedtime, often earlier than we think. Um, when your baby is a newborn, bedtime's naturally quite late, 10 or 11 p.m. But with every month that your baby gets older, bedtime naturally transitions earlier. And so we have to make sure that we facilitate that. So for your seven month old, if she's still napping about three times a day, bedtime can be a little bit later, uh, about 7.30 to 8.30. If she's only napping twice a day, then bedtime needs to be pretty early between seven and 8 p.m. And I would really say 8 p.m. latest. So have a look at how many times your baby is napping throughout the day and make sure you're giving her an ideal and an early bedtime. Because it, again, it seems so counterintuitive like most things with baby sleep. But if you're putting your baby down too late in the evening uh, and she gets overtired, whereas we would normally sleep really hard because we're overtired, babies are the opposite. Their little systems can't handle being awake for these long periods of time and it causes them to fight bedtime, wake more at night, and often wake earlier in the morning. So it's completely crazy and counterintuitive to what we would think, but that is the case. The second element that she needs for a healthy sleep foundation in addition to the right bedtime is she needs a peaceful bedtime routine. So perhaps you're already doing this and I'm sure you are already doing this, but the purpose of a peaceful bedtime routine is to give your baby consistent behavioral cues every evening, you know, the right activities in the right order at the same time. And this helps to cue her body and her mind to just relax and to know that sleep is coming and to settle into sleep easier. If you haven't really gotten into a routine yet, as you know, a lot of parents, they don't. They come, when they come to me, they still haven't really gotten their baby into um, a consistent bedtime routine. So if you haven't done that, I would definitely encourage you to do that, and you can start that tonight. A recent article I just published is called How to Start a Peaceful Bedtime Routine for Your Baby, and it walks you through the essential elements that have been proven to relax babies and toddlers, and it tells you in which order to do them. 
Now what you need to do, Nicole, is you just need to watch your little ones awake times during the day. So this is what I talked about a few minutes ago. Babies and toddlers, they have a biological need to sleep often during the day. And for your seven month old, she needs to sleep every two to three hours consistently all through the day, every day. But this is really, really crucial because the better that a baby sleeps during the day, the better that they're going to sleep at night, which is again counterintuitive to what we would expect as adults. If I napped all day, I would never be able to sleep tonight. But babies are programmed and basically wired differently. And this includes the lead up to bedtime. You don't want that last awake time between the last nap and bedtime to be too long because that could really affect her night sleep and make her wake more often. So when we're talking about baby sleep, and if you've read a few online blogs, you'll see the term sleep association. A sleep association is the condition or the prop that a baby associates with falling asleep and therefore needs to fall asleep. Your baby could have independent sleep associations like white noise, for instance, or that you put on her sleep sack and use up her sleep sack every evening before she goes to bed. Or she might have dependent sleep associations, which would require you, your assistance. So rocking to sleep, feeding to sleep, uh, replacing the pacifier. So you may be able to have rocked your baby to sleep for quite a while and she slept really well, some long stretches, but now as she's getting older, things are changing. And that's because her brain is developing. That's completely normal and that's a good thing. But what we want to do is we want to slowly wean off you having to help her because what happens is during the night, you know, babies wake up throughout the night. But with babies, once they reach a certain age, typically five to six months, and as they start to wake throughout the night, whether it's only a half waking, they're still quite asleep, or whether it's a full waking, if the only way that they know how to fall asleep is by rocking, for example, then when they wake up in the night, they're going to want to fall back asleep, they're gonna be tired, but they're actually not gonna know how to fall asleep because the only way that they know how to fall asleep is by rocking. So that's okay, there's no judgment, there's no blaming. Trust me, we have all done this. We've all gotten into these sleep associations or sleep props, and then one day we realized what's been working so well isn't working. I haven't met your little one, I don't know all the details. Of course, this depends on your baby's nutritional status. Was she preterm, is she underweight, is she growing as she should be? But assuming that you're pleased with your baby's um, food intake and growth and your pediatrician is pleased and saying your baby's completely fine and growing well and eating enough, then I would say most seven month olds can definitely be weaned down to one night feed and many can fully wean off night feeds. On my website, you'll see a guide called Weaning Night Feedings. <laughs> and that is a guide I made that walks you through determining when your specific baby is ready to wean off night feeds and then how you can do it. But I'll just give you some ideas of how you can stop rocking your baby to sleep. So first we'll start with a gentler method. What you could do is you could go through your bedtime routine and you could still rock your little one and you could get her nice and drowsy, but don't let her fall asleep. As you sense that she's closing her eyes and her body's starting to relax, then I would really slowly and you know as quietly as you can, I would then put her in her bed. Chances are she's gonna be like, no way, and she's gonna start fussing and saying, I wasn't asleep yet, how dare you? Pick me back up and rock me back to sleep. And this is where you're gonna teach her how to fall asleep on her own. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep her in her bed, but you're gonna basically hover over her bed and give her lots of hands-on support. So you might pat her bottom, you might rub her head, you might rock her body gently side to side, whatever it takes for her to accept being in her bed and then slowly falling asleep. If she gets really inconsolable and is super upset, then pick her up, calm her down, but then put her back in her bed. That's the general idea. After several nights of this, it's gonna become easier and she's gonna accept falling asleep in her bed with your assistance. And once you note that, so once it goes from taking her 20 or 30 minutes to settle and fall asleep, and now it's only taking her 10 or less, then you're gonna say, okay, I can see that she's adapting well, and now I'm gonna wean off of my support. So I won't do as much hands-on, I'll give verbal reassurance instead. I'll sing to her, I'll say shush, you know, I'll do different, more hands-off activities to calm her. So then you do that for several nights, and then as she gets used to that, then you start to move yourself out of the room as she falls asleep. You would wanna use this if your little one is highly sensitive, if she's very affectionate, or if she's, this is just such an abrupt change for her that you think that she's gonna really fight it, um, then you could go with the gentler method. 
Now, the pros for the gentle method are that it's gentle and that your baby's going to, you're going to be next to your baby the whole time assisting her. So ideally, she's going to resist less and she's going to fuss and cry less. A disadvantage is that it does take longer. If you're super consistent with your sleep foundation and with doing these steps, I would predict in general it would take about two weeks uh, to get your baby falling asleep quite easily and peacefully at bedtime. A quicker method is going to be something similar to the Ferber method, which I'm sure a lot of parents have heard about. Some people call it controlled crying or interval method, whatever you want to call it. The basic idea is you do the same thing. You have your sleep foundation, uh, you go through your peaceful bedtime routine, and you get your baby nice and drowsy, and then you put her in her bed, you give her a kiss, and you say, Mommy loves you, and I'm just going to pop out and go flip the laundry. And you're going to walk out of the room for three minutes or so. And then you're going to come back in the room. More than likely, your baby will have been crying because it's something new for her. She's like, where the heck did you go? You didn't rock me to sleep. Why all these changes? So then you go to her, you give her another kiss, maybe sing her a quick lullaby and say, okay, now I'm just going to go um, wash the dishes, something. And you can leave the room and you'll be gone five minutes this time. And then you're going to go back. So that is you pop out of the room for a few minutes and you want to increase that time that you're gone if possible. And then you're going to go back in the room and give her just a quick comfort. Um, not th nothing too hands-on. If you pick her up and she passes out on your shoulder straight away, then you'll know next time, okay, I shouldn't pick her up because she was close to falling asleep. She was just kind of resisting and she really needs to fall asleep in her bed for this to work. So you're going to do this at bedtime until she falls asleep in her bed. You're also going to do it for night wakings. So if you're waiting about five minutes each time, you're leaving the room for five minutes, then when you hear her in the night, you're going to wait five minutes and then you're going to go to her and you're going to keep doing your checks. This method, when you're, again, super consistent with your sleep foundation and with this step, these steps at bedtime and night wakings, it's pretty quick. You'll see results, most parents see results in three to five days. Typically by night three, it's dramatic results, and then by night five, it's often, you know, knock, knock on wood, sleeping through the night. So it can be harder, you know, a disadvantage is that babies cry and they typically cry more with this method because you're allowing them to have the space and the opportunity to learn to fall asleep on their own. Um, babies that are super independent anyway often do well with this method because they like to figure things out on their own. Even if they're loud and not seeming like they're liking it, they typically respond well. Um, babies that are really sensitive, like I mentioned before, or really affectionate, it's often not the method for them, or you have to just keep really short intervals. But remember, if you kind of don't know where to start in getting your baby to sleep well, the first place to start is my free Exhausted Moms Survival Kit, because we go through the first steps of setting your baby up to sleep well at night. And I'll link to that after I'm finished with this call, or you can go on my website and find it. So Nicole, I hope that helped you.